Hey crafty friends, it's Amanda with Pear Blossom Press. Today I've got a quick and easy Easter card for you, featuring stamps from the Rabbit Hole Designs. The new release is available today and we're celebrating with a blog hop, so be sure to click through all the links and enter for your chance to win one of two gift certificates. I'll have all the links um, on my blog and I'll have a link to that down below. Now let me show you how I put this cheerful little card together. I started with uh, the new set Easter Bounty. It comes live today. And I'm going to go ahead and load it into my Misty, and I'm stamping it with Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And I've got some 110 pound smooth cardstock in there. And I'll just go ahead and shift it over, and I'm going to stamp this carrot five times. I chose the Memento Tuxedo Black Ink because I'm going to do Copic coloring, and that's Copic friendly. Once I've got my images stamped out, I can do some really quick Copa coloring. Um, I'm going to use three shades of orange, and you can see the colors on the caps. I just use my lightest color down the center, and then I'm going to take my mid-tone, come in along the sides, a little wide, but not all the way to the center, and I'll add just a little bit of lines um, for some texture. And then I take my darkest shade of orange, and I'll go around the edges, and again, on some of those lines, just a little bit of flicks in the center there too. And that'll deepen up the color and make them look a little more round. And then once I do that, I'm going to come back in with that mid-tone again and do a little bit of uh, blending and then with the lightest color as well. Then I take my greens and I'm going to do the same thing. This time I'm actually going to use four shades. So I've got my light and then my mid-tone down towards the bottom where the shading is darker. And then I come in with those next two darker markers just to darken, or to darken it up there. Um, I'll clean up any sloppy edges with my colorless blender. And then I want to go ahead and add a sentiment to one of my carrots. So it says Happy Easter, and it fits in there perfectly. This set has some really cute images. I love those bunnies. I'm going to go ahead and line it up, and I'll stamp it again with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then this time around, I want to emboss it, so I'm going to clean off the stamp, and then I'm going to prep the area with an, anti, um, an anti-static powder tool. Then I'll use my Versamark to ink the stamp. It's a clear sticky ink, and I'll stamp right on top of the black ink there. And that um, Versamark ink stays wet long enough to grab your embossing powder. This is clear embossing powder. And it'll hold it while I melt it with the heat tool. And then look at that nice shiny raised texture there. So I went ahead and I cut out my carrots with the um, Scan and Cut. This is a handy machine. I use it all the time. And notice that I didn't leave any white border. I want them to blend into the scene that I'm going to create. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and define those edges a little bit more with a black Sharpie. And some of those uh, corners are a little bit tight and hard to get into. So you'll see me lay it down and I add a little bit of Sharpie um, to the front and the back. And that'll help get those edges if you need to. And I'm going to do this for all five of my carrots. And you notice the surface that I'm working on, that's my craft mat that's on a clipboard. I got that tip from Mary Polanco. Thanks, Mary. Um, you can clean it up easily with a little bit of alcohol. I keep some in a spray bottle there for any of your solvent or alcohol-based inks. And now I'll bring in my card base. I already cut this. It's an 8 by 9 inch um, sheet that I folded in half so that it's uh, now a 4 by 9 inch card. And I'm going to lay out a piece of green cardstock and those carrots and then this brown cardstock too. And I'm going to figure out the spacing here. First I want to go ahead and cut the grass. It's going to be in the background so I want to figure out high, how high up to to make that first cut. 
So I'm just going to play with spacing a little bit. Once I figure out where I want to cut, I'll bring in my, my plates for the big shot. And then I'll go ahead and get the grass cut out. Obviously the die isn't long enough to cut the whole sheet, so I'm going to uh, cut it the first half and then I'll go ahead and line it up and cut the second half. And notice I'm not overlapping it too much. Um, you wouldn't want to get a weird line where you've cut on top of another cut. With grass it doesn't matter that much, but for some of your dies it, it'll uh, be noticeable if you overlap too much. So now I've got my grass all cut out and I can figure out the um, brown hillside border that I'm going to put on top. And before I figure out, it, it's easier if you actually cut down the bottom rather than uh, trying to cut the hillside. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut a, a smooth hillside. Notice that I turned it so that the stitching is up. I'm going to cut the stitches off because I don't want them to show on this card. And I ran it through the same way I did with the grass, the first half, and then now I'm going to line it up and cut the second half. And it didn't give me a perfect little wave there, so I'll fix that with my scissors. And since there's no stitching on this side, it's, it's no problem to fix with your scissors. So now I can determine how short to cut it. It, it would have um, been harder to, to cut the bottom and then cut the waves out of the top. This way I can tell exactly where I want it. I'll mark it with a pencil. And I marked it on the back of my paper here. It's textured paper, so, um, so there is a front and the back. And my cutting plate is starting to get old and so my, my cuts are a little bit jagged, so you saw me take a, a bone folder and try to smooth out that cut a little bit. Um, I'm going to end up trimming it again just because I'm not happy with the, the edge, but at least it gave me a starting point. So now I'm working on my craft mat again here, and I'm going to glue the grass down. And the grass is a little bit longer, so notice that I'm kind of eyeballing that edge, but I will add a little bit of glue to the side of the the blue so that I know I do have a, a solid line of glue along the, all four edges. And that glue is PVA glue in a fine line bottle. Uh, it's kind of my favorite glue. I use it all the time. It works great for paper and for foam. I'm going to pop my carrots up. I don't want them to be as thick as the brown hillside. And I'm, I plan on popping the hillside up with a single layer of foam, uh, foam tape. So I've got this really thin foam from the dollar store. It's about half the thickness of the foam tape. So I'm just taking some scraps of it and I'm going to cut those to fit on the back of my carrots. And putting some little scraps on there too. It doesn't have to be completely covered, but you want a good amount of coverage so that you have some support behind the carrots. And now I can figure out the arrangement for these guys. And before I actually glue them into place, I want to trim the card down. It's easier when you don't have all that extra dimension popped up on it. So I'll go ahead and trim through all this and I'm actually going to trim a little bit of the blue as well so I have a nice clean line there and I didn't go through the back layer of the blue all the way so I trimmed that down with my scissors and here's where I decided to clean up the front edge of that brown hillside now it's pretty okay so now I can glue my carrots into place once I arrange them Don't you love the way the blue and the orange pop off, we, off of each other? I think it it's really pretty. They're opposite colors on the color wheel. So, 
so it's a little trick for your eyes. And I'm just uh, gluing these down again with a little more of that PVA glue. And I want to kind of stagger them along the hillside so that they look like they're, they're coming up out of the hill. Or growing out of the ground, I guess. Although technically the carrots wouldn't stick up out of the ground. But you know, <laughs> artistic license here, right? So now that the carrots are in place, I'm going to go ahead and trim off a couple of the little tips that hang too close to the bottom edge. Because I want to be able to run a layer of foam tape along that bottom edge. So I'm going to bring out my foam tape. And I don't need it to be the full um, width, so I'm going to trim it in half. And then I can just use a, a more narrow strip along the bottom. And I'll go ahead and uh, place some of the foam tape on the sides of the brown strip. And then I'm also going to figure out um, placement for some little pieces between the carrots. And this foam tape, if you don't press all the way down, you can lift it up and move it if you need to, like I do here. And then I've got a little, um, a little trick to laying this in place. Um, that long line down at the bottom is a little bit hard to line up exactly with foam tape. Um, you don't have wiggle room like you do with wet glue. So notice how I'm just peeling back a little tab on that release paper on the long line. I took the release paper off the other pieces and I can go ahead and stick those down. They're easier to line up. And then once everything's straight, you just peel that little strip out from the bottom. And there you go, perfectly lined up. And for a final touch, I came in with my aqua shimmer pen and I added it to that carrot. And I liked it so much, I decided to add it to the rest of my carrots. Cute, right? And that finishes the card. Super fast and easy. But I did not have a cute little envelope to put it in. This will fit into a standard number 10 envelope, like you uh, mail letters in. But I didn't have any. I had some red ones, but that wouldn't work. So I grabbed a piece of my um, scrapbook paper and then there's a handy little um, envelope punch board calculator on I'm just loving it Carol's got it in there for you and I've got a link for that um, down below and in my blog and you can use that and enter the dimensions for your card and it'll tell you how big to cut your square and where you make your first punch which is um, all you need when you have your envelope punch board here. You just need to know how big your square is and where to make your first punch and score mark. Now um, mine is an older board and my ruler at the top is not quite long enough to make an envelope of this size. So I just extended it with a clear ruler and I lined it up on top of the other markings and then I can make my punch and start scoring those lines. And notice that my score area is not long enough either. I think the new new punch boards have little fold out things that make that easier for you. I just took out my score pal and I extended the lines down. It's easy to do. It's just uh, one more step, but it works for me. And then I'll just repeat for these other sides here. And again, I have to extend that line here, but it's easy to, to line up and, and fold or rather a score. Now I can fold it up and you'll notice that these um, ends are a little bit long. That's because my uh, envelope is, is a longer rectangle. So we'll go ahead and trim those down and I don't have any measurements for that. I just sort of eyeballed it, made sure that I was cutting a, a straight line. I'm making sure that my fold line is is parallel to one of the lines on um, my trimmer. And then I cut a straight line across. And the envelope punch board has a little corner rounder. So for those two little tabs, I rounded the corners. 
And then I'm just going to glue it together, a little more of that PVA glue. Notice that I'm marking with my finger um, how far to apply glue onto the front flap. I don't want to accidentally glue the pocket closed. And I'm applying glue to both edges there. And then that's it. I'll test it, make sure my card fits, and then we're done. Cute, right? You can sign it and seal it and send it off. Easy, right? So I've got links below and down on my blog. Remember to check out the other blogs in the hop and then enter for your chance to win. If you liked today's video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. Thanks for watching.